Over the past month, I've been slowly making progress on my letterpress project. When we last left off, I had finished up the platen and installed it into the press. But I still hadn't finished up the cam mechanism, which actuates the platen back and forth. Here's what I came up with. This piece of quarter inch thick steel attaches to the inside of the large gear. Once installed into the press, it interfaces with the pin on the rocker to move the platen back and forth. Neat. But that's not the focus of this episode. This time around, I'm going to be working on the impression depth mechanism. Let me explain how that works. In the back of the press, the linkage arms are attached to an offset hole on the back shaft. By rotating the back shaft, the offset hole changes location, which affects the stroke that the press takes. So, to change the impression depth, I need to precisely rotate this back shaft. Now, with that important context, let's move up front. I'm going to focus my initial efforts on the control mechanism, the means by which I'll adjust the impression depth. In my head, I've been calling this part the throw-off actuator. The main piece of the throw-off actuator, and where I'm going to start, is the actuator body. This part starts life with some round steel stock. I'll face the front, and then drill a hole all the way through the center. Now, I'll form a stepped feature. And finally, I'll part the piece off. Oh, I'll also tap that hole over at the vise. Next, I'm going to make a part to fit into that step feature. Back at the lathe, I'll bore a hole down the middle of my material. and part off the work. Here's how those two pieces fit together. Next, I'm going to make the shaft part of the lever. This starts life with some 5 8 inch steel rod. After facing the front, I'll drill a partial depth hole down the center. The end of this part needs some threads. To cut them, I'm going to use my new tailstock die holder. This should ensure that they are straighter than if I just cut them by hand. Okay, now I'll flip the part around and work on the other side. I'll drill another hole down the center on this side, but this one's going to be a bit smaller diameter. What's with all these different diameter holes? All will be revealed soon. Anyway, now I need to figure out how to mount the shaft to the actuator body. I'm going to do this with a custom bracket. This bracket is going to be made from quarter inch steel bar. This 
part needs a hole precisely located for a radial bearing. I cut the hole slightly undersized on purpose. I want this to be a really tight fit. In order to get the bearing in there, I had to push my vise to its limit. Now, that's only one half of the bracket. The other half mates like this, and will be held together with a few bolts. This new piece needs a threaded hole to receive the threads in the lever shaft. Let's install this thing. Here's the sort of thing I had in mind. Now, the next task is to make a plunger to fit inside of the lever shaft. This piece is going to provide a mechanism for the lever to lock in its home position. The plunger has a small shoulder on the front. This is what will actually engage and cause the lever to lock into place. After parting the piece off, I'll work on the other side. On this end, I'll form a small threaded hole. Okay, let me show you how this goes together. First, I'll add a spring up against the shoulder formed by those differing size holes. Then, I can insert the plunger. And on the other end, I'll add a small bit of threaded rod. Finally, a nice big handle finishes up the mechanism. on the handle, the little pin piece moves back and forth, and because of the spring, it's biased towards the actuator body. All that's left is a small little divot for the end of the plunger to lock into. So this handles one side of the range of motion, but what about the other side? Well, I'm going to need an adjustable stop of some sort. If you haven't already guessed, this is the primary function of the ring. First off, I'll form a threaded hole. When a bolt in this hole is tightened, the ring should be locked into place. Second, I need to make this little pointer piece. This small chunk of steel will provide a stop that the plunger can run into.
Let me show you how this mechanism works. On one end, the divot traps the plunger. Lifting the red ball lifts the plunger and allows the lever to move. However, the plunger gets stuck on the pointer, constraining its range of motion. The lever is great and all, but somehow we have to attach this mechanism to the back shaft of the letter press. To do this, I'll make some pieces that will convert the rotary motion of the lever bracket to linear motion of a linkage. The design seems a bit weird at first blush, but I really wanted to prioritize adjustability. I don't know exactly how I'll want the lever to operate, and giving myself options allows me to make changes on the fly. Okay, let me install these pieces. Moving our way back, we're going to need a way to redirect the linear motion the lever assembly produces from horizontal to vertical. To do this, I'm going to use a set of linkages arranged around a shaft. Pulling on the linkage in the front will cause a linkage in the back to move up and down. These linkage pieces start life as some half-inch steel plate. I'll cut off a section to use for this project. I'll square off the sides on the mill. I'll use my rotary table to work on one end. First, I'll give myself a center hole to use as a reference. And now, I can begin to round off the end. I'll trim the sides to match the round end. And now I'll bore the holes in each end. Finally, I'll add a threaded hole for a set screw. Here's the resulting piece. Off camera, I made two smaller linkages with a similar process. The last pieces needed are the rod ends. I'll form a pair of flats on either end to reduce their profile. I'll bore a hole down the length of the piece. Getting this part set up in the lathe was interesting. On two faces, I had to use a technique used to center square pieces in the chuck, sweep an indicator over a face, and look for the local minimum. Now that the part's set up, I'll part off each of the individual pieces. On each piece, I'll drill and tap a hole for some threaded rod. Okay, I think I've made all the parts. Let's see how they fit on the press.
Here's the final impression depth mechanism. Moving the lever causes a number of members to move. The end result is the bed and platen getting closer together. What do you think of the impression depth mechanism? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. See you later.